Good morning and welcome. You are with the Skeins Diaries um, for a very cold and brisk and chilly Thursday the 11th here, episode 185. I'm Marie and um, that's my mate Claire in the background there, busy working away. Yep. Gosh, I tell you what, we have been so absolutely chock-a-block busy here, uh, which is great news. And many of you I know have been so patient waiting for your Southlander um, yarn and other orders to come out since our sale last week. Good news is uh, we're pretty certain we're going to get completely caught up today. So, and it'll be back to the resumption of normal broadcasts in terms of the yarn and getting everything out. So, that is very good news and very, very exciting. So thank you again to everyone for being so patient. Uh, but it is, it's fun. It's been, I mean, that promotion was really overwhelming and it has been so much fun getting all that yarn out to everybody, which is awesome. Absolutely awesome. And you may have noticed, if you get the newsletter, I have been very onto it this morning and got all, I actually did the newsletter this morning as opposed to doing it after I've done the diaries. I got in and got it done nice and early because there's loads of other things that Claire and I uh, need to get onto this afternoon. Um, one of which, actually, I'm going to show this to you because it's quite, because it just literally right, ooh, arrived this morning. Um, one of which is, uh, yeah, the new Knit Pro catalogue just arrived. Uh, so we need to get on to like, I mean, I'm going to say the C word, Christmas. We need to get on to all our Christmas stuff. I know, right? Uh, crazy. And it's still August and we're talking about Christmas. I mean, even the Americans won't have the lights up in stores this early. But that's where we're at, the joys of retail and having to bring things in from around the world. We have to get on to Christmas really early. So that's what we'll be doing this afternoon. So come on in. Welcome. Great to see everybody. And I'm very happy to see that Charles is here um, because he did have a little bit of a heads up that his ears might have been burning this morning because the newsletter, what I got out in the newsletter this morning, um, in my inbox, I think it was last week, wasn't it, Charles? Was it last week or the week before? All the, the Everything's flying around, um, away on me. Charles um, has been so busy uh, designing in the last several months. And if you aren't familiar with Charles Gandhi's designs, you need to go in and check them out. Um, Charles is known for his art pieces, particularly in the world of socks. Um, Charles is a master knitter. I've had him before on the Quarantine Diaries and here on the Skeins Diaries. But Charles, he has this wonderful knack of just creating timeless and seamless and when I say seamless I also mean seamless as in um, simple to execute designs beautiful designs particularly we've been doing and he's been doing a lot of shawls we had um, some serape which I talked about earlier in the year uh, and I just love them absolutely love them so Charles is always a darling because he always sends me his new designs when they come out and I get very excited. And the latest, one of the latest ones that he sent out is the one, is this one here called the Kiss Shawl. And I'm going to bring it up on the screen for you. Uh, and I got really excited about this because, I know even, here's one I prepared earlier. There it is. Woohoo! Uh, I got excited about this. And of course, I've gone and put this, let's move this over to this part so I can, there we go. I got excited about this because it is a design that ticks all of my bo boxes. I love a design that is something that's easy to be memorized, particularly in a shawl. This is me talking about shawl designs here. Something that's easy to memorize that I can just get lost in the ebb and flow of the knitting. Because one of the things about knitting, and one of the reasons many of us do knitting, is to get a sense of peace and mindfulness. And this shawl ticks all of those boxes. So if you are somebody who's an experienced knitter or someone who's only just begun knitting and you're wanting, and you've sort of got a few of them, you know, um, basics mastered and you're wanting to sort of go on to your next step, this shawl is perfect. And it's called the knit and, Knitted and Simple Stripes. That's what KISS stands for. And it's essentially a series of blocks between garter stitch stripes and um, Charles has called them fretwork stripes, which is a simple yarn over knit two together lace. I love that lace. It's a, and you can the reason you can love it is you can see it there. See how you get this lovely sort of bias with it? It's a fantastic bias. And it just creates this um, wonderful... Actually, I'll show you this one there. There you go. Uh, you can see that sort of lovely biasing that you get with that 
fretwork and then you've got the garter stitch and the neat thing about both of these and I mentioned this in the newsletter is these are only two stripe blocks right <laughs> oh gosh Charles you cracked me up Charles says he thinks the technic he thinks he said, I think it's technically faggoting, but it isn't so user friendly these days, this day and age. No, no, it's not. And I've gone and said it out loud, but there you go. And I, you're right. Oh, I forgot about that, Charles. That term. Isn't it amazing? The terms that we can't use anymore. That, yeah, I know, crazy. Um, it's just, I love it. I just, not the term, the, the lace. Get our minds back to the lace, people. I just really enjoy that beautiful yarn I've knit two together. Now, these blocks, why these blocks are so wonderful is that when you're knitting a shawl, the neat thing about garter stitch especially is, is the one thing that we know is garter stitch is reversible, right? The other thing you forget with garter stitch is it's three-dimensional, so it's got a really good squish factor to it. So there is a lovely... Um, almost there's a depth and richness with garter stitch that you don't get with stocking stitch which is of course a very smooth creates a very smooth fabric the yarn over knit two together fretwork does the same thing because you're actually creating this three-dimensional fabric it does have a right and a wrong side but you've got this beautiful three-dimensional fabric and the neat thing about the fabric too is you you create like this air cell situation because you've got these holes in between so you're just then creating um, different elements of fabric with, you know, with heavier bits of fabric with stretcher, uh, more stretchy fabric, which moves uh, with you. So it is, and you think to yourself, well, that's, you know, that is, um, it seems just too simple and too good to be true. But sometimes the simplest things are the best. So Charles has gone and knitted this in um, two skeins of Malabrigo sock. Um, using a 3.5 millimeter needle and it's done essentially in four blocks and repeats now I'm just going to jump this down here and so if you've got a couple of lots of Mag Malabrigo um, sock at home or any sock or fingering yarn weight yarn at home two skeins and often we have them right you've got a couple of skeins that you've got lurking around and you think oh what I'm going to do with those um you could actually stripe this if you've got two unicorn skeins that speak to each other there's absolutely no reason why you couldn't stripe it you could take two skeins and start one with one skein and as you're getting towards the end of one start skein start alternating your rows and blend in a new skein and then you could have a two-tone difference sure that'd be fun wouldn't that be fun uh, there's so many different things that you can do with it but this is the beauty about garter stitch and garter stitch and color especially because often when we've got like these Malabrigo yarns or I've actually got them just from my little stash just oh gosh and I've gone and got fluff on it typical I've just gone and plucked these two little beauties out because I had them sitting right there these are actually from Lynn Walsh from Fiber to Go Lynn's coming to can so excited about that these this is her primo sock base which is very similar uh to the Malabrigo fingering and you know something like this would look amazing in that shawl that all those colors would meld and mix and and bounce around together and look great so if you've got something like this already in stash and you're looking for something to knit in pull them out and what you get and I've just gone and pulled this out and I know this is pulse and I'm going to talk about this for a minute but it just shows you that when you've got garter stitch a you have this beautiful bounce and this lovely bounce but see how the colors you get the colors get moved and diffuse because of the wave like nature of the yarn of the wave like nature of the yarn of the stitching as you go together Ooh, Charles is just suggesting I want to do a version with two contrasting colors, one for the garter and another for the fretwork, like the way that you think there, Charles. Absolutely. And actually, it's funny you should mention that, Charles, because I was thinking about that earlier when I was doing the newsletter, and I nearly suggested that. And the only thing I reason I stopped was I wasn't sure about the meterages, whether or not it would, I mean, you would have to just knit it and figure it out wouldn't you whether or not you're using more meterage on the garter stitch or less meterage on the fretwork or vice versa or it doesn't 
matter? I wasn't sure. I, I mean, it's funny you should say that. And the reason why it's funny you should say that, and I'm just going to grab it. Is the other couple of yarns that I had sitting just there with, with the, was this, and I mean these are probably fifty grams, but I just I had them sitting together because I think the colours are very happy. Uh, these are um, Aracania, and these are just some silk, I think merino silk singles. Yes, uh, merino silk singles, and it, I was thinking, oh there we go, mm, probably use more in the garter sections. Yeah, that's what I wondered, and I just thought, oh you know, two toned and something like that would be amazing. Throw that back up there. Lost my train of thought. Yes. No. Getting um playing around with colour. So if you've got like some uniform unicorn skeins, you may have little extra bits and pieces lurking around. Um, dive into the stash and have a look and see what you've got. However, when I saw this too, that particularly you did in that beautiful amethyst colour, the first yarn that I thought of straight away was um, obviously Sockmetician Edition because we've got those, and there we go, I've grabbed Baker, which is the purple. It looks quite dark on there, doesn't it? Oh, the light's over there. Anywho, um, because it's got these beautiful soft shifts of colour, but it's also got that little bit of possum content. So in that open lace fretwork, the possum will actually bloom. When you knit this yarn, if you've never knitted, anyone, if you've not knitted with this before, when you knit with Sockmetician Edition, whether it be DK or the four ply, what happens is the, the possum that's actually in the yarn, you don't necessarily see it on the ball. And, you you know, you can pick it up and you can think, oh, that's nice possum. Where is it? I can't see it. Uh, because it's a worsted spun possum, so it's actually twisted right in there. When it comes out to play is when you actually work with it. So when you actually start handling the yarn and you start working with it and you're making your stitches, that's when the possum gets teased out of the twist of the yarn and comes out and says, hello, here I am, let's bloom away and have a bit of a play. And it does that beautifully with both garter stitch and that yarn over lace fretwork. So for me, as soon as I saw that design, immediately the first yarn that popped into my head was Sockmetician Edition um, full ply. Now, I'm going to mention a few four plies here. You would need, I see on your, I think uh, it was on the Ravelry Charles, you had it was, I guess, depending on the tension, um, between 730 and 820 metres. So if you're going to be safe on this, people, I mean, you could, um, I would be getting um, five balls. Five balls would get make you completely safe four balls uh potentially depend i mean if you wanted to pull things back you might be running a little bit close to yarn chicken i have to admit i like to run with a contingency plan so five balls for me is always always a go and if and you end with i think you end with Yes, work one more garter stitch band. So you end with a garter stitch band. The reality of it is, is if you've got a little bit of yarn um, left over, you just keep, you just make a bigger garter stitch band. That won't matter. And in fact, it'll anchor it, won't it, Charles? It'll help it sit really, really well. So um, any of these, uh, quite a few of these yarns I'm going to talk about now, five balls is your magic number if you want to get them. So sock magician edition is definitely number one that I wanted to talk about. The other yarn I mentioned, and I mentioned Sockmetician Edition in the newsletter. The other one I mentioned in the newsletter is uh, out, speaking of possum, because I thought of possum and I thought, well, it's got the bloom, it's got the openness between the stitches. Well, that's Outlaw, isn't it? You'd Outlaw Bohemia Light. Perfect all day long. Now, I've grabbed Radiance. The rest of the colours is all a thing, but I've gone and this is, this is my sort of odd, odd man out. And I've grabbed radiance because radiance and anything purple are friends because they're opposite each other complementary colors opposite each other the on the color wheel this shawl any a yellow shawl must be in every wardrobe i have a yellow shawl i don't stop laughing in the back or i'm gonna throw things at you yeah she hates yellow i love yellow she hates yellow see what i have to put up with and we work together in the same office and we don't kill each other it's it's a miracle really place would be like if we both like the same thing though oh god yeah no everything would no it would be dreadful actually <laughs> <laughs> well actually some of the best times that actually we have is you and i when we go to do a range and we'll be agreed on probably 
like if we had an eight 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 color range, right? We'll agree on seven, and then there'll be that eighth color. And that's when we'll have a robust discussion. I'd like to think I won all the time. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. Actually, oh gosh, there's a colour that's coming out in a range recently and it was in the dye house and it had just come out and we pulled up into the back door of the dye house and I said to Claire, oh. I think you said more than that. Yeah, I did. And then I realised what the colour was and I was like, oh, because I knew it was me that picked it. But I know, I know that once it gets into context with all the other shades, it will be great. But just seeing it, and a 45 kilo <laughs> mass of yarn stagging over tubs is that it just came out was yeah intense. it was a bit intense yeah I was <laughs> I was like <gasps> and that's when you worry and you think what have I gone and done anyway I digress I digress everyone needs a yellow shawl I think everyone needs a pop of yellow I love yellow and I love this radiance yellow and it's just absolutely beautiful and if you don't need a radiance yellow um you can have an absinthe or a um, what's your favourite colour in Outlaw? Oh, you were you like those um, the blue? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, that's right. You were. The Proserpine. Um, uh, Proserpine was in oh, that. Oh, that's right. Yeah. I haven't done anything in a while. No. I, in a while. I know. But anyway, I digress. Back to this. Back to this. Back to this. Uh, I just, I just think this would be great if you wanted a pop of color of something. I mean, I picked out the radiance. It could be anything. It could be Pandora, which is a beautiful orange. It could be um, Tiffin. It could be an Imperial. There is still, we still have a number of um, Bohemia colors in stock. So do make sure you check this out. But I think radiance would be amazing. It would just give you this beautiful pop of color um, with your shawl. So that was option two. So I thought, right, those are two possum yarns work great with this design. The other thing with this design, as I mentioned before, because of the squishability of the garter stitch and also that movement of the fretwork, another yarn that we don't talk about anywhere near often enough, and I should because it's fabulous and it's just come back into stock, which is why I thought of it, um, is this guy here. This is the Co 4 ply. I've talked about the DK because obviously my love note is knitted in the DK, but we do have this in the 4 ply. And you can see there with the squish, this yarn, for the softness of this yarn and the value of this yarn is incredible. It's just $5.95 a ball, I think. I think I've got it right. $5.95 a ball. I better double check because I'll get I'll get into trouble if I don't. She tells me she tells me off. That's why I have it. I oh, oh, oh sorry, six fifty. It's six fifty. That's right. We had to put it up because of the alpaca. Um, six fifty a ball, but still because this is full of merino and alpaca and lots of other wonderful goodies that have been recycled. And you can see, look at the bounce on that. Incredible bounce, and it's got that lovely tonal. Um, there, that's a good, lovely tonal shading to it. And that in that design will look amazing. It will be warm, it will be unctuous, it will be squishy. And these deeper tones would just look incredible and really quite broody and amazing. Um, but of course, it's soft enough to wear against the skin. So that is another one to consider. But of course, we, you know, where the beauty is, is often you want to play around with colour, right? So we talked about the tonal colours in Sock Petition. We do have some other yarns with those tonal colours. And when I went out, this was one that I thought, oh, I didn't even think of this. And that is good old Merino Soft Baby. And we have got about three or four tonal shades in that. Uh, this is uh, Lavender Crush. We've also got one called Cucumber Crush. And there is another one called, I think it's called, cloud i think it's just called cloud or cloud crush which is a gray and i've gone and done that one actually in a niata and it looks amazing so these would look really well and you'll get these beautiful sh soft tonal shifts of color and the other tonal one super soft would make a really wearable scarf is sock bandit sock bandit would be brilliant in that and actually that the high twist in the sock bandit gives you beautiful springy squishy um defined garter stitch and wonderful fret work that will move so sock bandit would be amazing so again work on about five balls um, of any of those or you may have one or two of these floating around in your collection at home don't forget opal 
Opal is amazing. Now, often too, though, if you're doing this for socks, you may only have a single ball of opal, right? Well, that's okay. I mean, you can purchase a couple of balls. Of the, I grabbed this one because I thought this one was really pretty. This one is called Memories. It's really cute. Um, but this is where you can double strand. If you've got a, well, not double strand, you can do two lots of blocks. As Charles was mentioning, if you had two different, different, different colours of opal sock yarn, you're thinking, yeah, there are only so many socks I need. I really don't need any more socks. This is where you can go with that. Um, so don't forget opal. I think opal will be fantastic. Crazy um, Zalba ball, if you've got some cra um, crazy Zalba balls rolling around. A couple of those would be amazing. Um, uh, Noro, um, Silk Garden, four ply, incredible. It It's the sort of design that will allow these incredible yarns to just sing and come into their own and be really amazing and and just have and just have some fun with it just have some fun with it so those are something that you can do also in the newsletter I mentioned you can be a complete rebel if you don't like knitting shawls using four ply or fingering weight yarn and you prefer to knit a shawl using heavier weight yarn to be fair I'm one of the people in that camp says she who has a shawl on a um, needles at the minute and it is uh, a four fingering but I digress. So this is my Niata. This is in DK. You know I'm a hitchhiker fiend. This is the hitchhiker. But what you can do with this design is you can do this in DK too. There's nothing stopping you. And this is what I love about this design. Because you can size this design up and size it down um, depending on how you feel. It's already a generously proportioned shawl and four ply. You imagine applying a 4.5 millimeter needle and some DK to this shawl and wow, you are going to then have a really impactful piece which becomes a, a garment on its own and can be really quite amazing. So that's why I grabbed the pulse out. So this is the Hitchhiker and Pulse. Now this Hitchhiker in, in DK, because this Hitchhiker is normally knit and, knitted for a fingering weight yarn. So to give you an idea, I didn't do all the teeth. I think I got to about 36 teeth. I keep going until I had enough. This is five balls of... Um, Yes, five balls of pulse. But as you can see, this is a decent sized shawl, right? And this is running at around 20% bigger than if it were done in a fingering weight yarn. All right? So if you use it as a rough roll of thumb, you have some really neat options with this. And in Charles's design, he has it op um, operating for four sets of uh, repeats with some stripes, and then you end with a, a, a garter block, a garter stripe. Well, you could actually just roll that back to three sets with a garter stripe in your DK and a 4.5 millimeter needle, and it will give you a similar proportion, maybe a little deeper because of the row gauge, but it will give you a similar proportion. Or you could just go balls out and do do it as written, upscale your, your needles, upscale your yarn, and get something that is just totally wrap around and love and gorge and just really envelop yourself into something completely amazing and then of course pulse all day long is perfect because as you can see pulse and garter stitch is a very very happy thing so that is and you can play around with all the colors i mean we've got colors that do fades so you could do a fade and pulse it would be amazing if you love the sock petition edition you can do it in dk instead of in four ply incredible or get yourself organized now purchase the shawl and get ready for our um we've got so many new yarns um coming to the can promotion like there are so many new yarns and this is our big finale for midwinter stitchmas so as well as sale yarns there are brand spanking new yarns that we've never had before and one of them is of course this one that i've already shown you which is the first one through the second color actually is sitting at the mill we just need to pick it up and the third one i think may have already been done See, this is a very limited edition just done for can. It's called Nightfall. Now, I did my Ever After Cowl in it. And this is this in that shawl. Amazing. I've done the cowl, this cowl on a four millimeter needle. So you've actually got a really interesting decision to make. You could actually use this as written 
on a 3.75 millimeter um, and you have got on here 250 meters per um, 100 grams so you would need I would be getting four of these if you're going to do it on the 3.75 or you supersize it throw it on a four you could throw it on a four like I've done here or a 4.5 and um, go for it fill your boots and I think that would make an incredible wrap for evening because it's got a little bit of lurex in there just a tiny little hint of lurex um, so it's got a wee bit of sparkle and shine and then of course those wonderful prints all those colors mix and meld as they go across the garter stitch and the fretwork so I would definitely be grabbing the pattern in preparation. It is one I just know. Um, I can't wait to actually to cast this on now, Charles. And I've been sitting here talking about it. I know it will go into my rotate with a number of other designs that I have. That when I go to do shawls, I just keep going back to the same ones again and again and again, like Niard, like Hitchhiker, like this, because it. It, keep, it has that mindfulness for you. It just it just allows you to get sort of go gently along with the ebb and flow. And sometimes you just don't want to be stressed with your knitting and you just want to enjoy it. And I know that this little kiss is going to be something that you'll enjoy. So I do have the link for um, the shawl actually in the show notes. So it's very good. Uh, so in the description, it will all be there. So you can link across to that. And it's also in the newsletter that's already out. Speaking of ebbs and flows, I have been working on my show, G. I'm at 232 centimetres. I need 254 before I can then do a little garter band and then I can do my origami with it and sew it up and then pick up the collar at the end. So I have an end in sight. I was really hoping to get at least 10 centimetres out yesterday. It didn't happen. I only managed, I think, about three or four but there is a I, I I can see the finish line. I can see the finish line now. And it's I, I am actually enjoying it. Like I'm not at that point where I'm just like, oh God, I hate you and I never want to see you again. I'm actually now getting quite excited because I know that I'm getting close to completing it. So that is quite exciting. And that will be getting its uh, debut at Cannes. And once I've done that, it will probably come into the shop as a sample here for a while. Um, so everyone can enjoy it and have a look. So that is coming too. Uh, actually, you know, that's got me thinking now, Charles. I think I have to do that in this. Ooh, see, this is what happens. I get distracted and then I think, oh, I'm going to do that in this and this will be great. And I know, it's shocking. Too, too much knitting, not enough time. Uh, right, what other news did I have to tell you? I do have other bits and pieces that I have to tell you. Claire gave me a list and then it all went gone. I know. Um... No, oh, it'll come back. I'll tell you on Monday. I've definitely done the update on that. Oh, sh she'll tell me off. Shh. I think she might have gone to the mill. Yeah. Right. That's enough for me. Oh, that's what I had to tell you, though. I have reloaded some stuff up. You'll see them on the gift section. The stock hasn't gone against it yet, but it will, I promise. Um, there's some pom-poms and leather tags and bits and pieces. I have them all here, but... Our system is not the easiest and we have to load all these things up and put these things in place, but they are coming, I promise, I promise. But that's enough about me. I'm going to get going. Thank you very much for your wonderful design, Charles, and joining us today in the chat. It was great to have you here. Um, you and I actually need to get together and have another big proper chatsy chatsy soon. I think it's been long overdue. But until then, enjoy, enjoy your knitting. Hopefully... Um, you get an opportunity to get some knitting done. It's absolutely frigid cold here to all my Northern Hemisphere friends that are sitting in the chat. It is freezing, um, like single digit Celsius. And believe me, we don't do single digit Celsius in this part of the world. It's not a thing. Uh, so there will definitely be knitting going on here this weekend. I can tell you that for sure. So until then, I will see you again on Monday. Take care and happy stitching. Bye. <laughs>